Hello friends. In the earlier videos, we learnt about three important and mandatory financial statements of a company. These are the balance sheet, the profit and loss account or the income statement and the cash flow statement. Now, as we mentioned, these statements are made by accountants. But are they only for the accountants? Absolutely no. These statements must be used by managers for running their companies. So therefore, managers have to learn how to look at these statements, analyze them, read meaning from these statements, and then use these statements and the messages they give for improving the companies. This is a very major task. So in this video, we're going to be talking about some very simple techniques of how to look at these financial statements and try to understand what they are telling us. This is done by many techniques. One of the techniques that we will be talking about is called ratio analysis. Ratio analysis, of course, is to do with ratios. Now, what are ratios? Ratios are simple numbers which are derived from one or two or multiple numbers that are drawn from these financial statements. Now, what is the beauty of ratios? The beauty of ratios is that ratios are very simple to understand. Not only are they simple to understand, these ratios are independent or largely independent of the type of company and the nature of the company, which means that you can compare companies which are $100 million or even $10 million and the ratios would be comparable. Some of the ways in which ratios should be looked at. One, always compare ratios or ratios between two or more periods. It is a trend that is important and not the ratio per se. A continuing trend of improvement is better than great results in one year. You can compare ratios in your own company between periods or you can compare ratios of within from others in the same industry. Now, what are the characteristics of a good company? A good company should be profitable. It should be solvent or liquid, which means it should have enough money to pay its debts. It should be leveraged. That means it must have the right amount of debt and equity to ensure growth and returns. It should be productive. That means it should use its manpower resources, its financial resources and its machine resources most effectively. So ratios have to tell us all these things. Therefore, you have profitability ratios, you have liquidity ratios, you have solvency ratios and we have productivity or efficiency ratios. We will be discussing a couple of these ratios in this video. Let's look at an important ratio or the most important ratio for a company which is the profitability ratio. As we mentioned, a company has been set up to make profits and therefore profitability ratio is extremely important. One very important profitability ratio is called ROCE ratio, R-O-C-E ratio. ROCE ratio is EBIT divided by capital employed. We have learned what EBIT is. EBIT, this is divided by the total capital employed. What do you mean by capital employed? Capital employed is the total amount of money that has been invested in the company. Now, once you compute this ratio, you will get a number. Now, what is a good number and what is a bad number? There are no standard answers to this question, but there are some guidelines by which we can go. I have provided some guidelines in this uh, video. These are not universally valid, but they are largely valid. For example, a company which has got a ROC ratio of greater than 20% is very good. 15 to 20% is okay. And less than 15% is a troublesome company. Because after all, what are profits for? Profits are meant to provide returns to the various people who own the returns. Who are they? The people who have given you debt, which means you have to be able to pay back your debtors. The people who have invested in the company, which means the owners of the company, they have to get dividend. So returns of a company are necessary to meet these obligations of the company. Now, how does ROCI come or how does returns on capital employed come? It comes only when another ratio uh, is sound and effective. And what is that ratio? That is called the gross margin ratio. Gross margin ratio is again a very simple ratio. It is the EBIT divided by revenue. That is the earnings divided by the total revenue or the total sales that we have made. It is given by the formula revenue minus COGS. We have heard of this term COGS earlier. That stands for cost of goods sold divided by revenue. Now, again, what are the levels for this ratio? As I mentioned, there's no standards, but I would say that if you get 33% and above 
on a gross margin ratio, it's excellent. 25 to 30, 33 percent is okay and less than 25 percent is dangerous. Now why is it dangerous? Imagine a company which is making a profit of 100 rupees and if it is a ratio or gross margin ratio of 25 percent that means they make 25 rupees as profit. Now this profit, what should they do with this profit? This profit, from this profit they should pay interest which could be about 7 to 10 rupees. They need to keep aside some money for depreciation which could be again 8 to 10 rupees. They have to pay tax which could be 2 to 3 rupees. So after all this there is nothing left for the owner or for the uh, equity holders which means 25% gross margin is not enough to meet all the obligations of a company. Now let's look at the other important aspect of a company called liquidity. What is liquidity? Liquidity means the ability of a company uh, to be able to meet its debt obligations. What is debt? You have borrowed money from banks. Against this you need to pay the installment every year. You need to pay the interest. You may have taken assets on lease. You need to make lease payments. Now these are all the obligations that you have to the people who have given you this debt. Now you must have enough earnings to be able to pay off these debts. This is calculated by a class of ratios known as liquidity ratios. A very important liquidity ratio is what is called the current ratio. Current ratio is made up of the current assets divided by the current liabilities. That means the total money that I have in the form of inventory, receivables and cash equivalents is in the numerator and the money that I owe to my suppliers, bankers and other lenders is in the denominator. This ratio should be in my opinion about 2 which means that the amount of assets that I have cover the debts by a factor of 2. This makes your company very liquid. There is another version of this same ratio, a tighter version known as the acid test or the quick ratio. In this ratio only very liquid assets which means cash and cash equivalents and accounts receivable are taken in the numerator because inventory is considered to be more illiquid. That means it is more difficult to liquidate inventory. So therefore current I mean acid ratio is the ratio of the most liquid assets of the company which is cash and accounts receivable. This is in the numerator and the denominator of course is our total debt. If this ratio is above 1 that means that even without taking into account inventory my assets in hand today are well enough to cover the debts that I have. Such a situation is good. Again if an asset test ratio gives you a figure of about 1.2, 1.3 it is excellent for your company. Another very important ratio uh, which is used extensively by banks, financial institutions when judging a company for giving loans is known as the DSCR ratio or the debt, debt services coverage ratio. Debt services coverage ratio is an excellent ratio which judges your capacity to be able to pay off your debts. Now look at income of a company. This income of a company is the money that comes into this company. Now if most of this money goes into paying debts or goes into paying installments, you can imagine how weak your company is in terms of liquidity. This is what DSCR ratio tests. DSCR ratio is made up of net operating income plus depreciation plus interest in the numerator, principal repayment plus interest plus any lease payments in the denominator. Therefore this DSCR ratio if it is above 1.5 it is considered excellent. 1 to 1.5 is okay. Now how do you know that your business is running efficiently? Your balance sheet and profit and loss account gives you a lot of clues for this as well through the class of ratios which are known as operations efficiency ratios. We have talked of three or four different types of operations efficiency ratios. Uh, one of them is called the day's sales outstanding. What this means is how long does it take for your company to collect its accounts receivable. Another ratio is called the day's inventory outstandings which means the average number of days a company holds inventory before selling it. Debts payable outstanding. This is the time in days a business has to pay back its creditors. And of course there is another important ratio known as the cash conversion ratio. Cash conversion ratio is how much time does it take for you from the time that you invest in raw materials 
for you to process this material into products and services, sell it to your client and get the money back. Inventory outstandings ratio tells you whether you're holding too much inventory or not. Another way of looking at inventory and its efficiency is by a ratio known as the inventory turns ratio. This is very similar to the inventory's days outstanding ratio. The only difference is that in this ratio, the numerator is the sales of the company and the denominator is the total inventory held. What this ratio means is the number of times we are able to turn around our inventory. Uh, for example, in the case of a retail company, a retail company may be able to turn around its inventory 30 times. What it means is the amount of money that they have invested in inventory, they're able to sell it within less than 15 days, which means that the same amount of money they're able to use again and again and again 30 times. So therefore, gentlemen, we have learned about various types of ratios. We have learned of profitability ratios. We have learned, learned of solvency ratios. We have learned of operations ratios. Ratios, in summary, are simple ways in which we can make meaning out of financial statements and use these, this knowledge for improving our companies. Thank you.